It's wonderful to see you. Welcome to Time to Thrive. How you doing, Blue? Well, I'm better now that I've got to see all you guys again. How are you all doing? Well, let's find out, shall we? Should we do a check-in? Today's question is, if you were something you wear on your feet, what would you be? Hmm. What would you be, Blue? He's thinking about it. Well, Miss Nick, I think that I'd be a super fast pair of trainers. We go faster stripes on and really snazzy laces so I could run really fast. Wowzers. They sound really great, don't they? I think that I would be a really comfy pair of fluffy slippers. Mm -hmm. Ones that are warm and comfy. That's what I'd be today. So, today we are going to be reading a lovely story about a boy who's got some worries. And for our activity, we're going to be making some worry dolls. They're going to be really cool, aren't they? Um, we're going to be making music with Mulberry. We're going to be having a mindful moment with Violet. We've got jokes and hula hooping too. So let's get on with it. Go on, Miss Nick, let's do it. Today's story is all about a little boy who's a bit of a worrier. And it's all about how his grandma helps him to manage those worries. It's called S Silly Billy and it's written by Anthony Brown. It's a really lovely book. Let's have a listen. Billy used to be a bit of a worrier. He worried about many things. Billy worried about hats. And he worried about shoes. Billy worried about clouds. And rain. Billy even worried about giant birds. His dad tried to help. Don't worry, lad, he said. None of those things could happen. It's just your imagination. His mum tried too. Don't worry, love, she said. We won't let anything hurt you. But still, Billy worried. One night he had to stay with his grandma, but Billy couldn't sleep. He was too worried. He always worried about staying at other people's houses. Billy felt a bit silly, but at last he got up and went to tell his grandma. Well, fancy that, love, she said. You're not silly. When I was your age, I used to worry like that. I've got just the thing for you. She went into her room and came out holding something. These are worry dolls, she explained. Just tell each of them one of your worries and put them under your pillow. They'll do all the worrying for you while you sleep. Billy told all his worries to the worry dolls. He slept like a log. The next morning, Billy went home. That night again, he told all his worries to the dolls. He slept like a stone. The next night, Billy slept well and the night after that. But the night after that, Billy started to worry. Colin, Polly, Lizzie, Mary, Sammy and Teddy. He couldn't stop thinking about the dolls. All those worries he'd given them. They must be so worried. It didn't seem fair. The next day, Billy had an idea. He spent all day working at the kitchen table. It was difficult work and at first he made lots of mistakes and had to start again many times. But finally Billy produced something very special. Some worry dolls for the worry dolls. That night everyone slept well. Billy and all the worry dolls. And after that, Billy didn't worry very much at all. And neither did his friends. Billy made worry dolls for all of them. To make your own worry doll, you will need some wool, a peg, lollipop stick, or just a stick, some pens, a pipe cleaner or two small sticks for arms. This is optional. Begin by adding the face and hair details onto your doll. A 
Adding arms is optional, but I drilled a hole through the top of my peg to feed the pipe cleaner through. You could just wrap the pipe cleaner around to create the arms. I start wrapping the wool around the lower part of the peg doll first. I leave a long strand after I've tied a knot round the body of the doll so that I can attach the other end and secure it after I finish wrapping the wool. Then I start wrapping the wool around the lower part of the doll. Tie the two ends of wool together to secure it. In the same way as before, you can begin wrapping the wool around the top half of your peg doll's body. Leave a long length after you've done your knot securing it so that you can tie the other end in place. Tie those two ends of wool together to secure them. Now your worry doll is ready. Mulberry, 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 do you have some music to share with us all today? Of course I do, Miss Nick. I brought my music with me. I've got the songs in my head. I'm ready for the rhythm. I'm ready to sing with you all. Are you all ready to sing with me? That's the question, isn't it? That is the question. I'm ready. Are you ready? Come on, let's go with it. So what are we singing today? Well, we're sticking with the same song as before because we, the repetitions is really important. We're going to use body percussion today, Miss Mick, because we don't always have instruments with us, do we? No, we don't. So what are we going to be doing? Well, today you can click your fingers. However, lots of people can't click their fingers and that's okay. You can clap your hands, you can clap your knees, you can do anything. Have you got any, any other ways of making sounds? You can do that. Fantastic. So, are you going to remind us of the song first? Oh, I am. And then you can sit in this knee and add the percussion in. Deal. Okay, so are you ready then? It's so great to be me. It's so great to be me. I'm the best I can be. I'm the best I can be. Isn't he wonderful? Isn't he wonderful? So now, Miss Nick, what you need to do is you're going to sing it and you're going to click your fingers as well in time to the rhythm. Oh, OK. I'll pop you on my lap then, Mulberry. There he is. You just see the top of his head there. There he is. He's really watching. So I'm going to click my fingers. I can only click the fingers on one hand. This one, it's not doing anything. It's just waving in time. And so are you ready then? It's so great to be me. It's so great to be me. I'm the best I can be. I'm the best I can be. It's so great to be me. It's so great to be me. I'm the best I can be. I'm the best I can be. Well, we could go on and on singing that song, couldn't we? That's right. That's right, Miss Nick. You could sing it on and on, and if you want to, you can. And just repeat that positive message. It's going to make you feel really, really good. It's good to think nice things about ourselves, and it creates those positive pathways in our brains. Always about the brain with Mulberry, isn't it? Yeah. So that's all we've got time for with Mulberry. Will you come and see us again tomorrow? I sure will, and I'll bring some more music with me. Marvellous. Well, it's time to hula hoop, isn't it, Blue? That's right, Miss Nick, get your hula on. Go on, go and do some hula in. I'm gonna.
Violet's here for a mindful moment. Isn't it wonderful to see everybody, Violet? Oh yes, Miss Nick. It's really lovely to see you all today. How have you been getting on, Violet? Well, I'm going to be a bit honest with you, Miss Nick. I felt a bit down in the dumps earlier. I'm just really missing everybody. And I know I'm going to see everybody soon and that everybody's keeping safe. And that's really important. But I just was really thinking about them. It's true, isn't it? It can be hard, can't it? Yeah. So what, how did you manage that then, Violet? Well, there's a breathing trick that I know that's really quick at calming you down when you feel yourself starting to get a bit anxious or a bit worried, like Billy in the story. Oh, I wonder what that is, Violet. It's called one nostril breathing. One nostril breathing? Wonder what that's about. Well, what I want you to do is I want you to put your, your thumb and your little finger up and the other fingers down. So like this then. That's right, Miss Nick. And then to start with, you place your thumb on the side of your left nostril and you inhale, that's breathe in, through your right nostril. Okay, so like this. I'm on a breathing in. That's right, Miss Nick. And then you swap over and you press your left little finger against your right nostril and you breathe out through your left nostril. Okay, so I go breathe in, through, through the left nostril, and then I swap them, press them onto the right nostril, and then an exhale through the nostrils this time. Normally we exhale through the, our mouths, don't we, Violet? Yes, but this is just a different trick with the breathing, okay? Okay, and then what do we do? So then you swap and you breathe in, so you've got your little finger pressed against your uh, right nostril. You breathe in through your left nostril and then you swap, press your finger against your left nostril and breathe out through your right, right nostril. And you alternate through those nostrils, breathing in and breathing out. Crikey, shall we have a go? Do you think we can do it? Okay, so thumb and little pinky finger are out. Okay. Thumb against the left nostril, breathing in through the that right. Then swapping, pressing over onto that one and breathing out through the right nostril. Then breathing in through the right nostril. Left nostril, <laughs> I'm getting confused, aren't I? Okay, and then swapping sides and breathing out through the right nostril. And then breathing in through the right nostril. And swapping sides and breathing out through the left nostril. Breathing in through the right nostril and breathing out through the left nostril. Do you know there was a lot to think about in that breathing exercise, wasn't there? There was a lot. And I think it's one of those things that if I practice it, it might get easier. The swapping sides and knowing which nostril to breathe out of and which to breathe in through and which to breathe out. It was a bit, I think I'm going to need to practice that one, Violet. Well, that's right, Miss Nick. And you know that if you practice things, it gets easier, but it's just a way of focusing on the breathing. Um, inhaling through your nostrils helps you get more oxygen in your bloodstream, and it just gives you that focus with the out breath as well. Fantastic, Violet. It's always nice to learn lots of different ways of doing things, isn't it? We'll see you again, to Vi again Violet. Yes, Miss Nick. I'll see you again soon. It's would you rather time, you heady blue. So today's question is, would you rather never, ever, ever get to watch television again? Dear blue. Or would you rather never, ever, ever get to listen to music again? Oh dear blue. I don't like the sound of either of those, Miss Nick. I love watching television and I love listening to music. I don't think I can choose. Oh, it's only for fun, Blue. Okay, if I'm gonna give up one, I'm gonna give up television because I love listening to music, I love singing to music, and I love dancing to music too. There's so much you can do with it. He's so right. There's a lot you can do with music, isn't there? I wonder what you would choose. 
before we say goodbye to everybody, we're going to share a joke, aren't we? Today's joke is, what is a witch's favourite lesson at school? Hmm. I don't know. What is a witch's favourite lesson at school? Spelling. <laughs> Spelling. That's my favourite lesson at school too. <laughs> and it is time to say goodbye now. You ready, Blue? Okay. Hoyo bye, friend, yay! Thank you.